Good morning. Welcome to our time of worship here at West Grove United Methodist Church. It's a joy to lift up Christ this morning and to share fellowship together in his name. We come together and only Christ can bring us together in such a, uh, vital ways, in ways where love and friendship are, are the priority. We give thanks for being with you this morning. Uh, for our, our ministry opportunities, we want to lift up that there is a trunk or treat coming up. That's next Sunday and you're invited. We could still use a few more trunks to give out people who are willing to share in the festivity and give out uh, gifts to the children. And we look forward to that time. We do ask everyone, please be sure and wear your mask and stay social, socially distanced. Um, we we wanna be careful and always be careful, good stewards of the health that God has entrusted to us and the, the many blessings that we share. Then we also wanna lift up that on November 1st, we will celebrate All Saints Sunday. We will have a time here in the sanctuary. Uh, we look to especially invite those folks who may have lost someone this past year, set the priority for them to attend. Uh, if there is a need, I'm happy to offer an outside service that afternoon, uh, maybe with communion again, but that's up to anyone who, who provides uh, a response. We'll see how many people would like to attend, but we will keep it limited because of social distancing and the, and the virus. Also wanna lift up for you, for you a very important time that on Thursdays now, we will offer a Bible study. I will offer a Bible study here in the sanctuary at 11. On Thursday mornings, we'll stay socially distanced. And then we'll also offer it on Zoom. Uh, the Zoom time will be at seven and we can send that out by a church-wide email. So please be sure and include your email to us that we, sh we want to be sure and have it so that we can uh, send that link to you so that you can join us. And then also we continue inviting people to help us with the sound booth and the technology on Sunday morning. There are challenges at times, but our crew has really has learned a lot this summer and they're ready to teach and share because they have their vacations and uh, also different times when they won't be able to be with us. So we ask for that. Uh, if you can, please join us and, and help us with our ministries. And then the last invitation is for anyone who feels called to join the emergency aid team. Uh, we have some wonderful people who have taken part. They are doing a lot to share God's love. And we have some new opportunities, some new endeavors that we need to engage in. So if any of you would like to join the emergency assistance team, the emergency aid team, please call me, see me write to me by email. Uh, we certainly would like to have more people serve so that we can discern how God is asking us to share the resources we have with those in need. Well, we have come to gather in Christ and to lift up our hearts and allow God to enter into our hearts. I invite you to turn to the call to worship. Empty hands held high are such a small sacrifice. If not joined with my life, I sing in vain. May the words we say and the things we do make our life songs sing and bring a smile to you. Let our life songs sing to you and sign your name to the end of this day. Knowing that our hearts are true, let our life song sing to you. Lord, we give our lives as a living sacrifice to reach a world in need, to be your hands, your feet, so may the words we say and the things we do make our life songs sing and bring a smile to you. I invite you to, to use those of you at home to join in and sing with our, our Praise Works Mini in singing the song, Life Song. The rest of us will, will take it into our hearts as we hear this wonderful music. The song we're going to sing is uh, the song that the call to worship was taken from. It's a song I was familiar with already. It's a great song. And I love the analogy that our life is our song, and may our song be pleasing to God. So the last word that, words that we said are words from the song. So may the words we say and the things we do make our life song sing and bring a smile to you. So may our lives bring a smile to God. And join us as you're able as we sing life song. Two, three, four.
faith leads us to have a life song, a song that sings to God, that sets God as the first priority so that our lives have meaning and purpose and we can look back on them with, with great joy. Shall we open our hearts in prayer this morning? Empowering God, we turn to you in a time of great need for wisdom and vision. Come, move into our neighborhood, dwell deeply with us. Help us to see the new heaven and earth the transforming power 
that you can provide and strengthen us to fulfill that vision. May your glory be at the center of our lives, building community in the hearts of all humanity. Thank you for providing us with such insight. May we not shy away from graciously fulfilling your vision as we see the new heaven and earth, new earth where all women and men from all parts of the world are treated as your sacred children. May it transform us to be better stewards of life and creation, to partner with you in bringing forth and tending life. Help us to raise up leaders of strength who are gracious, thoughtful, and who lead us in empathy to make the most of all that you have entrusted to us all. May the tears we have cried in your hands lead us to new understanding and insight about your love and grace as you lead us into the joy of heaven. Love divine, all loves excelling. Joy of heaven to earth come down. Come, Lord Jesus, come into our hearts every day, and may we freely share the blessings always. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our next hymn this morning is the hymn Soon and Very Soon. If you have your hymnal with you at home, you can sing along on entry number 706. for that vision of Christ, that vision that God wants to lift up to us so that we can live our lives in the fullness of life that he provides. We are blessed this morning for a moment for all ages from Pastor Melanie. Sorry. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, sorry to be a little like off in the distance there for a minute. I was uh, I was just, you know, thinking, just kind of like daydreaming, thinking about lots of different things. Do you guys ever daydream? Like, I don't know, maybe you daydream about what type of food you want to have for lunch. Maybe you're daydreaming about how you would spend your day if you didn't have to be in school or doing other things. Well, have you ever daydreamed about the world? Like, have you ever thought about what it would be like if you were in charge and could make the world be the way that you wanted it to be? What kind of things would you have in your world? Would everybody dress the same way? Would there be an unending supply of your favorite food? Would everybody get to go to a carnival or an amusement park every day and like ride all the rides? What's your world like? God created our world and all the people in it, which I know all of you already know. And also, we know that there's a lot of beautiful things in this world. There's so many good things that God has created. But we also know that there are things that are broken and things that make us sad. And God envisions a world of love and peace and compassion. 
because that's who God is. And that's what Jesus taught to his disciples and also teaches to us. The Bible talks a lot about what God envisions for the world to be like. There's things in the Old Testament, there's things in the New Testament, especially the book of Revelation, which is at the end. And it talks all about what God envisions for the world, all the things that will be made right, the harmony that will be restored between people and God, but also between people and the earth. All of creation will be in sync and balanced and all of that shows honor and glory back to God. So what kind of world do you imagine? And how can you be a part of the world that God wants to create? I'll leave you to think about it. And I'm going to go finish daydreaming about my own too. See you later. Good morning. Good morning. As we come to our time of prayer, just let me share something with you. I'd like to share with you the word serve. Serve. You know, it's one of the great words of Scripture. But what does it mean to serve? It may be different for each one of us, for we are to serve God. You know, the Messiah is noted in the book of Isaiah as the servant of the Lord. We are to serve one another. Jesus said, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. So the word serve has a great depth of meaning. So I challenge you this week to think about the word serve and how you serve both God and man. Interesting word, because it has great depth. What does it mean to serve? As we come to prayer this morning, during this past week, we had the opportunity to pray for Tom McClure, who was undergoing chemotherapy, but had a reaction to it and was currently in the hospital. And then we need to pray for Rich Saller. He continues to be in much pain, and they're trying to seek the cause of this pain that they may help to, to reduce it or eliminate it. And then Joan Saller asked for prayer because she was suffering for headaches for many, many days. And after we prayed, she says, the headaches went away. And so we're thankful that Joan, Joan is with us here today, that she does not have those headaches. Power and prayer. So we're thankful for that. Are there any others that we should be adding to our prayer list for today? Donna. For Maureen Stickler, yes, for for her lung problem. Joan. So we continue to pray for Tom. Thank you. continue to pray for our school and the situation. Thank you. Thank you. Dick.
So Kyle's going for her. Her procedure. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Michael. So pray for Wayne in the ICU. Yeah, and I have a good friend from Cape May who is that I have issues with her. Neil Neil, okay. We'll pray for Neil and his problems. Thank you. Let's go to prayer. <clears throat> loving, caring, and compassionate God. <clears throat> we thank you for your promises to us. Especially we think of the promise of eternal life and our eternal home in the city of God that we call heaven. Jesus, in his words to the disciples before he was crucified, told us what he was doing for us when he says, my father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, I would have told you for that I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Father in heaven, we thank you for these words of Jesus who is preparing a place for us so that we may be with you in eternity. You will be our God and we will be your family to live together. There will be no tears of sadness, no more death or mourning, crying or pain, for in your presence will be love joy, and peace. We as believers, by faith in Jesus Christ, claim this promise of eternal life. Father of all, we ask you to hear the prayers of your people as we continue to pray for Tom McClure undergoing the chemo and is still having problems. We ask that you be with him. We continue to pray for Rich Saller and his pain condition, that they may seek the cause so that it may be treated. We also give thanks, Father, for the headaches that Joan Saller had who are no longer there. We thank you for her answered prayer and that she may continue to be pain-free. We pray for Maureen and her pneumonia and her limited lung capacity. Ask your blessings upon her. We ask for prayer concerning our schools and the education of our students. For Father, we know it's difficult to learn by Zoom or by other virtual means instead of being in class. We pray for Carol, she goes for her procedure. We pray for Wayne, who is in ICU. And we lift up to you, Neil. Father, we thank you for all who are watching via the Facebook page. And we give thanks for those who are present here today. May you bring a blessings to each of us as we come to worship you to serve you as our true and living God. For all these things we ask as you hear and respond to these our prayers and join together as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, we take time now to open our hearts and think about the ways that God has blessed us and entrusted us with great gifts and be prayerful, thoughtful, faithful in the way we respond in what we share and how we share it and with whom we share it. We are blessed this morning to have some recorded music by our Memory Bells Choir and what a blessing it is. So may we allow their music to lead us and lead us to, to see what God wants us to understand, his vision for our lives. Amen.
We are blessed this morning. Shall we open our hearts in prayer and dedicate our offering to God? Precious Lord, we thank you for you are the fount of every blessing in our lives. So receive our gifts, our response to you. May it empower us to serve and to share all that we are and have every day. Throughout the week, may we see the ways we can share your grace and love. Receive our gifts and receive us, and we thank you, Lord, for so many who, when presented with barriers and difficulties and challenges in sharing our gifts, we find ways through it. You help us through it and empower us to give nonetheless, to give always, and to give freely. Thank you, Lord. Help us always in all that we do to draw closer to you and the people in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our next hymn, we invite those of you at home to sing along. It's, if you have a hymnal, 733, Marching to Zion. We are moving towards heaven when we are faithful in Christ. That is our joy, and that is the hope and the promise that we live in. We are all a work in progress, marching to Zion with God's help, with God's guidance. Well, we come to our scripture text this morning, and we've been looking at this series on heaven, and our vision of heaven is so important to us because it leads us to define life, to understand what is and isn't important to us in life and to try to stay focused on the most important priorities, the priorities God has set for us. Sometimes there are words of condemnation for behavior that we should not engage in because it will suck the life out of us. It will destroy community and pull us away from God. And God wants us to be living fully. And so we come to this scripture, a scripture that especially as we, as a nation, approach an election, 
I felt would also be good to help us understand that we are trying to create God's kingdom here on earth. And so when we are so blessed to be able to make decisions, to have choices, we need to be faithful to working through it and be faithful to God in the ways that we do it and we speak with each other in the ways that we process the whole, the whole journey. And we need to be faithful and follow through and vote because so many gave their lives so that we could. And there is a trust here and a responsibility that is a joy. Freedom is, comes with responsibility always. So hear now from Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 8, and then I'll read chapter 22, verses 1 through 7. In the New Revised Standard Versions, it's entitled, The New Heaven and the New Earth. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. God has moved into the neighborhood. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. To those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the polluted, the murderers, the fornicators, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Here now the river of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and there will be no more light. They need no light of a lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. He said to me, These words are trustworthy and true, for the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophet, has sent his angels to show his servants what must soon take place. See, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. The words of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Precious Lord, you provide for us your word, and sometimes it is oh so rich and deep that we miss it. We take some things literally, we hover over others, we, we become superficial in so much of what we're willing to look at and see. We ask you to help us each day and help us as a community, as a fellowship, as a nation, as a world, that we see the complexity and the depth of your love. For as we see the depth of complexity of the challenges and the sin, we see the complexity and the strength, the empowerment of who you are and your grace and mercy even more fully. May we not shy away. May we always focus on your grace and who you would have us be. So be with us now, and may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts always be acceptable in your sight, for you are our Lord, our rock, our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. So I was taught, first of all, I thought of saying it before I read this passage, but Revelation, some people believe Revelation, it was written by a bishop of several churches, and he was a bishop who was exiled on this, this island to go to nowhere that they thought they would push him away and he would be silenced and that would be the end of it. His Christianity would be stifled, but instead he writes Revelation. He has this experience of God. And I was taught by one of the scholars that I read that 
that many people think that Revelation is in itself a worship service. If you went through it faithfully, fully, it would take about two and a half to three hours. And it's all there. The imagery, the understanding, it's to lead us to have faith and hope. It's to proclaim that God wins. That in spite of all the challenges we face, God will win out in the end. And, and we have to hold on to that faith and stay true to God's word. We've had the series this past several weeks about heaven because heaven helps us define life. Heaven helps us understand the choices we're making between life and death. And so it's very important for us. And, and this vision for me of a new Jerusalem is what I also believe guided so many people. I, in my family, he was always called Billy Penn. I, I, mean, I don't mean any disrespect. But William Penn in creating Pennsylvania, John Wesley in leading us in Methodists, there was a sense that we are creating the kingdom of God here and now. And that's been part of the sermon series for us. Because I see so many of us feeling powerless when God wants us to be empowered by the strong love that he has, the grace that he has for all people. It's not easy at times. Our view of heaven influences our everyday life. What we believe will set our priorities, will shape how we choose and how we even face death whether we see our lives as being worthwhile or whether it was wasted. And so those words that are tough sometimes to hear are trying to help us not stray away. So I have an example for you this morning. It's not very biblical in its own right. I mean, I've never heard this story. But you'll see a, a long pole with a spoon on the end of it. Now, I got this, and this is often a children's message or a moment for all ages. And I always found as a pastor, a lot of times people are paying more attention to the children's message than they are to the one that we preach because sometimes it's a little too deep or a little too thick. But the children's message that I often enjoyed sharing was there's an old fable, an old story that says that everyone gets into heaven. Everybody. Everybody gets into heaven. And in heaven, they have the best food you could ever imagine. Do you like pizza? Oh, man, they have the best pizza. Do you like steak? Oh my goodness, french fries. You know what I like in the morning? Uh, a lot of my friends know I'm a Cheerios guy. Yeah, I have a special way of eating Cheerios, but I won't get into that. But Cheerios, whatever it is, whatever really tastes good. I'm a, also a rice person. Whatever the food is, it's just incredible. And in heaven, everyone is given a special utensil to eat with. The challenge is, everybody goes there, and the challenge is that it's a long utensil like a spoon or a fork on a long stick. I'm going to ask my wife, Julie, to come up. She promised me she can take her mask off because she and I are in the same bubble at, at home, right? And so the challenge is that what ends up happening, you can come closer to me. You know, if I tried to feed myself, if I tried to feed myself with this long pole, I couldn't do it. And so all these people in heaven have this long pole with a spoon on it. And there's a way around it. There's a way that people can really enjoy heaven and enjoy its gifts. I'm going to ask Julie to come more into the camera. Really so, close. Well, not that close. <laughs> but part of it is to be generous and to say, okay, Julie, what would you like to eat? And ice in cream. heaven, ice cream, ice cream, ice cream, like I like to eat. So it's really, really important that we learn that we feed each other, we help each other in the gift of life, in the gift of faith. If we try to keep it all for ourselves and we're only worrying about ourselves, we're gonna starve, we're gonna waste away. But when we really love other people and we're willing to, to serve them. Now I want ice cream. You, now you want ice cream. The, <laughs> the real blessing of life and the real blessing of love that's when love and friendship and life takes off. That's the vision of heaven. Some people would waste away. Waste away because we're not following, we're not being creative in what God would lead us to. Thank you. I'll give you a kiss later. Okay. I hope that illustration helps. That if every person, we envision every person having that long spoon but we can never really feed ourselves. If we become too self-centered and too focused on ourselves, then 
then we're going to be lost. But when we're willing to reach out and help each other, then we can fulfill a vision of heaven. And so it is about this city of God. I remember having a teacher, a professor in college, and he was so angry one day because he came in from the parking lot and he had seen a, he had seen a bumper sticker in which it said, things go better with Christ. Now John, as a professor of philosophy, was a deep person, a deep thinker, a deep hearted person. And he was so upset, so angry about reading that bumper sticker. I know it's true that we try to bring people to Christ in whatever means we can, but he was so upset because they had taken a, Coke, a Coca-Cola slogan and turned it into a way to try to reach someone in Christ. And he said, Jesus Christ was not meant to be kept so superficial. We do want people to know the message. We need to prepare them for the depth of what God is offering. I understand, and there are times when I succumb and and try to find ways to help people come closer and catch their attention. And so I would lift up to you that this vision of heaven, this wonderful vision from Revelation, we see from the, the books of the Bible and the journey of the thousands of years of faithful people that this vision of heaven is not created instantaneously so easily, but it comes at the depth of great sacrifice and love. Love from God, love from all of us. We're very quick to want a quick and easy solution. We want to, to, to give me the cliff notes. Give me the quick and easy way to get there. And then along the way, we end up stepping over people or stepping on people and treating people as a means to our end. They're unimportant. They're, they're the condemned. They're horrible. They're the worst. We're the ones that God has chosen. We're exceptional people. That's not faithful to Christ. Christ wants us to know the depth and says to us, take up your cross and follow me. I came across a couple years ago, I was reading and trying to understand something and I came to, back to something I had read several different times throughout my life and it's this idea of the power of positive thinking and I invite you, especially those of you since you're watching on computer, when you're done with worship, Sometime in the next week, go and Google on Wikipedia the power of positive thinking and read through the whole thing. Norman Vincent Peale, Dr. Reverend Dr. Norman Vincent Peale was a Methodist pastor and he turned away from being a Methodist and started his own big church and had big, big following, thousands and thousands of people. It felt very affirming. But the criticism of him back then and through the years since is that sometimes then we make our faith into something so superficial. And he was accused of being the person who ended up brainwashing himself. And his followers would brainwash themselves into thinking things are always going to get better. And he avoided, denied the challenges and the problems that they faced. Now, I don't want to question his motives. I don't know them. God only knows them. And today, power of positive thinking is in a lot of what we want to say and do today. We are not going to create that vision of the city of heaven, Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem, coming down to a new heaven and new earth until we come to understand the complexity and the depth of what we face. There's plenty of pain to go around today. And when we think about our faithfulness in an election, there are so many people that have been through so much trauma whether it was the trauma of racism, the trauma of losing several jobs, the trauma of being a woman who is totally dominated or abused by men or by so many different people, the trauma of of missing out on so many things. They can influence our lives in incredible ways. And God wants us to have the see the choice and make the choice to receive the fullness of forgiveness and mercy and love, the wholeness that he offers us. There are many people who want to push our emotional buttons. In our weakness, they will will get us to to buy into their their vision, just like a can of Coke. (laughs) God offers us so much more, and he challenges us and calls us to be so much more as disciples, to have real and faithful responses to the world's tragic brokenness, At times I I get fearful, but I try to let God come in and empower me to get beyond the fear. I am still concerned about how much anger, how much hatred there is, 
the division and competition there is within our nation, within our world, even within our United Methodist Church. I fear and am concerned and am trying to be faithful in helping guide what will happen going forward, whether it's the church or the nation. We can't back off. We can't also settle for some cheap, easy answer. We need to lift up God's vision of heaven for the world to see, found in all the books of the Bible. I think all of us would agree we can't brainwash ourselves to solve this problem. We, we can't avoid dealing with the truth. All of us agree that we want to get there. We want to get to heaven. We often disagree on how to get there. And some people even disagree on who should get there because we feel some people don't deserve it. We have so many grudges, so many trauma. Justice needs to be served, we tell ourselves, or else unjust, unjust seem, to be, seem to get away with it. We need to stop living in the competition with one another and understand the depth of God's generosity and what's possible. God can lead us to true reconciliation and healing. He can help us seek the restoration and transformation that we need, and that's what this scripture lifts up for us. We want real leadership. We want real leadership in our world, in our nation, in our homes, in our church. We need real leadership in our communities that provide a real vision of heaven and aren't going to take the shortcut, the easy answers. You know, it said, remember that old phrase, some people are so heavenly bound they are no earthly good because whatever we're doing has to have a very real response to the tragedies and the issues that are facing us. I mistrust people who try to push my emotional buttons and I try not to push other people's too. People who inflame arguments and anger and pain. People who manipulate people and take advantage of others, see them as a means to an end and in a self-centered focus. No, I, I worship Christ and try to follow him, and I'm a sinner. I fall short. There are people who have taken advantage of women. There are people who have taken advantage of the poor. We even had a time when people owned slaves in this country. So we hear these words, this assurance, this vision of heaven. The home of God is among mortals. What a vision. God has moved into the neighborhood, one translation says. He will dwell with them making his home with men and women. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Now that's a vision of heaven worth lifting up. And also understanding the challenging steps it will take to make it happen. I have a confession to, to all of you, is that I do believe there are tears in heaven. Some people take that passage so literally and take it so far, but I believe there are tears in heaven. Tears of joy, for sure, of seeing the people you love. Tears remind us of just how sacred life is and what a precious miracle it is. But tears of heaven have about understanding and insight. As we come to understand our lives, there's another scripture that I, that I turn to for a vision of heaven. It's from Paul in the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians. We know only in part and we prophesy only in part, but when the complete arrives, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. But when I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now, now we see only in a mirror dimly. But then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these is love. You see, we don't have all the answers any of us, no Republican, no Democrat, as you look to elect the people to serve. It's important we understand. It's important that we understand that we mature in our faith if we are faithful and we let God lead. We don't settle for quick, easy answers, superficial responses to the world's problems and brokenness. Instead, we are led to a deeper understanding and a deeper way of life and I believe that was always the way of the Methodist Church. And I pray it continues to be. I'd ask you in that deeper sense, if you are a Republican, how are you going to help the Democrats heal from this election if they are going to lose, if they end up losing? 
How are you going to heal, help the Democrats heal from this election if they lose? How are you going to help them heal if they win? Because there's healing on both ways. And if you're a Democrat, how are you going to help the Republicans heal from this election if they lose? How are you going to help them heal if they win? Because healing needs to happen both ways, always. And those of us who are independent, as I am, we need to not stay aloof, but also be engaged in the, in the discussion, the dialogue, and to stay faithful to Christ. The challenges we face go way back, generations before us, and maybe that's part of why it's such an emotional thing. It seems so unfair to us that we inherited a, a culture where there was slavery, and now there are people who are traumatized by it and its aftermath. But God can provide the restoration. That is the hope that is found in Revelation. We need people who don't divide, who don't put us against each other. We need the Christ who unifies, who brings healing and wholeness, who can bring it to our nation, our communities, our churches, our families, and all of us as individuals. The gift of the good news is that we are loved by God, who does not by easy superficial solutions to satisfy us. We are loved by the God of the cross, the God of the resurrection. Jesus said, you know, it's like to get to heaven, you have to pass through the, it's like trying to put a camel in the eye of a needle. Somebody said, well, he, you know, the translation isn't quite right. He didn't mean that. I think he did. I think there's something about going to heaven that we have to let go of everything. All the possessions, all the accomplishments, all the status we think we are, and only go by God's grace and God's mercy and who God is willing to say we are as his beloved children. So there's a vision of heaven to bring to earth. I pray that you can be faithful to it. I pray that we won't settle for something cheap and superficial and easy, but go to the depth of life and heart and mercy that God provides. I'm challenged because if I got started, you probably know who I'm going to vote for. <laughs> but I lift up that for us as Christians, we do things because we care about other people. We wear a mask, not so much to protect ourselves, but because we want to protect the community. For $5 mask for everybody, we would have saved $5 trillion in this country. If we would have done that six, seven months ago, we didn't have the wisdom as a nation to do it. I don't know you can blame one person, but we can all blame, look at ourselves and understand. We need to take care of one another. We need to get out that spoon. Maybe the camera doesn't pick it up real well, but we need to be ready to feed each other, to show God's love to one another and not try to hoard it for ourselves, not try to justify ourselves, but to be mindful of the grace that God has entrusted us to share. That's the vision of heaven that, that I think God wants us to lift up. A vision of heaven to bring to earth. For the gift of the good news is we are loved by God who does not buy those easy solutions. So I invite you to think about the ministry that you're a part of. The difficulty we've all had in trying to, to live and share in ministry during these times, we're trying to overcome them and we're preparing for the day when that heaven opens up for us. And I do ask you, we've Make those ministry moments at the beginning. Maybe some of you are ready to respond. And invite you to understand that I invite you into ministry with me as your pastor and know that I am a sinner. I have emotional buttons that get touched. I want to be on this journey with you and understand the depth of where you are. For you are all an exceptional group of people. And I want to have you with me and with us and I and us with you. I need your help, and we all need each other, whatever party you're a part of or if you're an independent. Someone new is not a threat to us. They're not as much a threat as they are an opportunity for us all to grow in new ways, new in understanding and new insight to mature in our practice and love of faith. May we practice and put into practice, put in embodiment of our faith in all that we do. I invite you to, to consider that emergency assistance group. We have people that really need our help, 
and we need discernment, and it shouldn't be just me or just one or two people making that decision, but we need others to join us. There's an invitation to discipleship everywhere for us. May we hear it and see it and accept it and live it each day. Let us pray. Precious Lord, we pray that we are not self-focused and self-centered. We pray that you help us lift up leaders who are more true to what you've called us to be, who you've called us to, to live like. We pray that our example will always be in Christ. Help us to discern, help us to have the wisdom, the patience to take the steps that are needed. And we seek your fullness, we seek your understanding. And we give you thanks, for we know you love us, and that is your will to provide for us. Thank you, Lord. May we trust in that care and that grace always, now and always. Amen. Well, our closing song this morning is Bleed the Same, and it's by our praise work group. We invite them to lead us. Those of you at home can sing along. Our views and our expectations of heaven and the grace of God can certainly guide our lives and give us hope during the times of great blessing and during the difficult times. It seems like a particularly difficult time right now when our health and safety are of utmost concern and when there is such unrest and division all around us. We need to realize that we are all in this together and we all as one, as children of God. We can be stronger together when we unite as God's children. I've been thinking about this song quite a bit over the past couple months because even though it was written a few years ago, the words are so relevant today. Some of those words are, we all believe the same. We're more beautiful when we come together. We all believe the same. So tell me why, tell me why we're divided. If we're gonna fight, let's fight for each other. If we're gonna shout, let love be the cry. We all believe the same, so tell me why. Tell me why we're divided. If it doesn't matter, I'm sorry, it doesn't matter if we're left, if we're right, if we're black, if we're white. We're all the same inside. We all believe the same. So why are we divided? What a difference it would make if we all reflected and lived by these words. Those of you who are here at church, please reflect on the words of our closing song as we sing. Those of you at home, please join us as we sing, Bleed the Same. We all bleed the same.
May each of us go forth and know that we are all loved by God and, and be embodied and empowered to embody that love to the people we meet. May we never settle for easy answers, quick responses, or cliches, but go forth in the depth of mercy and grace that God provides now and forevermore. Amen.